That's a hit. Too, it was too one-dimensional. I think still Lulu mid with a carry top laner is a very, very strong composition. I think that was the, the mistake maybe maybe from LGD. Malphite had too low damage, and then of course Vi who fell so far behind. You know what? I think we might. I don't want to jinx it, but we might see all three open right game now. With yeah, uh, you know, every single hundred percent thick band champion. There's the, there's oh. the first one getting dropped off, but there's still the Elise, the Lulu, the Mordekaiser, the Darius. So, I'd ban Mordekaiser here and say, LG, do you want to play Lulu again? Here's your chance. But if you do that, we take the Elise pick. Lee Sin has been banned away from TBQ, so we want to try once again get a strong jungle matchup. Matchup. I think Rexai though is a fine enough pick and trade that away for Elise. But we just need to see more from LGD with this Lulu. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, the thing is, it's not really about um, you know getting the stronger jungle pick. It's about denying from TBQ so that you can force oh. him. Oh. During it, they're basically oh. saying, "Do you want Elise yeah. or do you want one of their the top tier picks, Lulu Mordekaiser, Mordekaiser that can go on the other side?" Lulu and Elise are the top. And they oh, go Darius. So not and, yet. Not yet. Well, AG, but those LG, are the four. LGD can turn the tables because. KD can only take two of those themselves, so yes. then they at least two for get two. it. Exactly, they at but least get it back. Again, you would then figure that KT would want Mordekaiser and Elise for that absolutely insane early game yeah. power, and say, you know what, LGD, you're gonna get the Lulu. Darius late game, his damage is okay, but he's not a massive threat up there. It will still be about Imp's DPS. Yeah, time. I'm definitely not a fan of early picking the Darius because you can run the Nara into it. You can even run the Fiora into it as well. And the seen. change, yeah. And I think so. it's definitely the least valuable of the four. Yeah, they had to change it here. They don't want to give away the Elise. They want it for TBQ. He had problems yesterday. We know it's a big deal for KT Rollstar with the score and Pickaboo together. The early power they put up. We heard all the talks about how strong the early game can be. The real question is though, do they pick Mordekaiser if they rely so much on Pickaboo's roaming? Mordekaiser yeah. needs he's, a support he's with not, him. He's, he's not, not really someone like that solo. you can leave like that. We always mention the supports and wow. how, how good the supports are that are able to get off good roaming, but also the AD carries surviving while their supports roam also deserve uh, a point there. So, And it's worth noting that KT don't even seem to care about these pick and ban trends, these 100% champions, because there's still a couple left open. They're leaving the Darius on the yeah. table. They're leaving the Mordekaiser on the table. They don't care. So here's what KT is doing. Kiting is so effective versus Mordekaiser. Because if he can never get to one shot that target with his ulti, get the ghost in a team fight, if he can never really stick to a target because he's a slow melee champion, he never gets to do too much in team fights. So what they're doing is saying, you know what? for LGD, plus they have the, even though Sivir was nerfed and you need to be near her uh, to get the full activation of the speed buff, a lot of pick here with the double skill shots coming from yeah. Thresh and Elise. But it's going to be a weak bottom lane with the Sivir. Can't really punish these Giacomo compositions too much in the laning phase. She gets outskilled already from level six and has a hard time trading. But obviously they're looking to try and speed up the game then and not allow KT to sit and scale up towards late game. We have seen so many times in the LCK where KT rolls up, get control in the early game in terms of vision. And then they just play the very slow game, you know, allow your carries to scale up and just make sure the other team can never make an aggressive play against you, but you don't see what's going on and you can always counter gang it. So Juggerma, very obviously the composition here for KT Rolster. We still don't know if that Lulu's going in the mid lane or the top lane. But this is so smart from them and saying, hey, we leave Mordekaiser open. We will continue to target your jungler. We know that in LGG.
ladies and gentlemen. We seem to be having some technical difficulties, so the analyst desk is going to jump in here for Champions like <laughs> and possibly the game. We'll see. Oh, boy, All right, time man. is now, I'm gentlemen. Down. Well, so we've seen a lot of this play out. Let's try and play catch up here. Thoughts so far as we've seen the Mordekaiser fall all the way through champion select. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get picked up here. And they also picked a Varus here for the mid lane for Godvi just to have a poke champion as well. <laughs> Against the Braum, though, it is a little risky. First pentakill of the season, LPL, Godvi, Varus. He's a freak on yeah. the champion. Do not underestimate it. Yeah, I think it's definitely still a very good pick for him. Poke conversation. Yep. Yep. But he's the only poke on that team. I really like this from KT. The last last pick. Dude, to get it. The, they last they get so fight into so, three physical It's DPS. so dangerous to go poke composition against red side. You can't do this. LGG's massively lost yep. his pick and ban face. I yeah, love KT's comp is super good. I love to play around the Mordecai's. I absolutely love to play around it. Yep. Alright, and they're told to wait on the game until we can get the uh, the stream back up, it looks like. Oh. So why? So before the Malphite came in, so was the Varus pick just wrong because it was like going to be a, a big opening or what? So the Varus pick came in, obviously as the last rotation here for LGD. They took the Varus. They want to make a bit of a poke composition because they see, obviously, they protect the AD carry comp from the side of KT, meaning the Malphite last pick is going to be so, so key. Yeah, that's the thing. You're trying to do poke against uh, the Juggermaw composition, which could be OK, but it's against red side. And KT, with the last pick, get that hard engage so they can try and get right back to the Varus, and they can break that poke comp. Plus, KT extremely smart with their first two picks. Although they didn't ban Mordekaiser, you build your first Love two it. picks against it, then you effectively deny it through the early round picks. That was such a smart pick and ban face. Knowing that TPQ had a bad day yesterday. It's been yeah. an issue, you know, during the season. He wanted a priority pick for himself, so they went for Elise. Lulu was suddenly open. Great against the Mordekaiser itself, so they have now a counter pick in case they want to play Mordekaiser on the side of LGD. And the Braum, and the Braum as well. It works really well in that sense. The team fighting power we're going to see from KT is going to be absolutely insane. What was strange yeah. to me as well, when you look at LGD's pickups there, as soon as you saw Braum Lulu picked up, I was like, oh, they're going for Juggermaw. This yeah. is yeah. the most obvious tell in the world that Arrow's going to be picking up Kog'Maw. They've got already two defensive champions. You saw the hover on Gragas as well, which even further betrayed that they were looking at that champion. And then they decided, wait, we can hold on to this one. And then LGD, they don't get any more hard. Like, they picked up Sivir, which is a bad like, lane matchup, but then don't even pick up more hard engage to go alongside it. They didn't find any more ways to dive into this one. And then say, you know what, never mind. Yeah. Let's go poke after all. Let's go pick up a Varus in the mid lane with no other pokers on the team. And I'm just very, very confused with the LGD lineup here. I mean, starting this game for LGD, there's, there's a timer going. Basically, you cannot go late game. Your virus is going to fall off completely. Your Sivir has no chance versus the scaling of a Giacomo composition. And you have this Malphite who's going to be stacking armor because you have Hecarim top against him in the 1v1 lane. Mm -hmm. So you basically have a setup here for LGD where they have to massively win the early game but the only main engage is the Hecarim flying in with home guards to start the fight, and then Varus maybe with his ulti trying to lock someone down. And there's so much protection on the side of KT and good yeah. lane matchups as well. There's a lot of protection, um, but their late game damage will be lacking. If LGD can start to snowball, they've got a Malphite in the top lane, they've got a Gragas in the jungle, they've got the Lulu for the mid lane. So it's going to be all around Kog'Ma. Obviously, sure. yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. it's going to be all around Kog'Ma, but there is a Hecarim on LGD's side. Yeah, so a real quick, guys, for you guys on stream, we had a power outage in our production truck here, so we streamed it down for a second. You guys yeah. missed some of the picks and bans. The the game itself was unaffected. The picks and bans played out completely normal. We then stopped the game, and we're going to be starting it in a little bit here. So uh, to recap the lineups real quick, because some of the pick and ban was missed, uh, LGG had the first pick, Elise, and they grabbed Sivir. Uh, Basically, we've got Hecarim top lane, Elise in the jungle. Mid lane, Varus was picked up late yep. in the draft. Sivir there for the AD carry, Counter and the support was, was it Thresh? I Thresh, forgot. Right. Thresh was support, support pick. pickup, yeah. So, uh, Varus was, was last pick on the blue side, but very late on in the draft. So, KT Rolster, their very first two champions, they had picked up Braum, uh, plus that Lulu, and you were talking about setting up for the counter pick to the Mordekaiser. They grabbed the Kog'Maw, so they've got this Juggermaw comp coming through, a Gragas for the defensive 
um, jungler pick, but then the very last pick on the red side was Malphite. Once they saw the Varus mid come through, Malphite top lane for someday. The hard engage, to be fair, is here for both sides, the top lane, but getting into a, the Kog'Maw seems much more difficult. Yeah, and much easier for KT to pull off. The instant effect of a teleport Malphite coming in uh, is definitely going to be a big tool for them to get to that early game, to get to the Trinity Force for Kog'Maw so they can start knocking down turrets. And also LGD's side, Varus mid lane, Sivir AD carry, Hecarim top lane, it's all physical damage coming in. It's yep. heaven for Malphite, you can stack armor and be nearly unkillable. but Gragas is going to do the same with the Sindhold first and building tank after. So their front line for KT is going to be massive, adding a Braum shield to block some of the damage coming from two AD carries. It is going to be so difficult for LGD unless they show something in the early game where they managed to get a lead over KT. Red side has been so important on 518, and KT really, really strong draft phase. Love to see the crowd, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, for this year, most in, in particular, been uh, actually more of a, like, I always kind of believe that the sides were closer, but really this year we've shown that red side, I think almost has an edge over blue here, because uh, even though we heard the analysts say, oh, you know, blue side, they can get a, they can get a jungler for, for uh, TBQ here, but that's so abusable. You get to pick yes. one champion and give away two. That's exactly what happened here for KT. It was so predictable for KT. Oh, yeah. What was going to happen? So, okay, we mentioned very quickly when champs like started how, oh, maybe they have to worry about banning Mordecai's and Gangplank so yeah. they can only remove one of the junglers, not both Lee Sin and Rex. I said, you know what? We don't care about Mordecai. If we leave as much open as possible, especially the Lulu, so we have to counter pick in case they go for Elise. The zone control from Braum, so much Everything. defense there to control the battlefield, make it hard for Mordecai to move around. You don't even want to pick it into that. No, and that's why we didn't see him pick. He's been banned yep. in so many games. Last one was the first when he got through, he won the game, he was first picked, and now he's not even being picked because of these comps. Yeah, and this actually, this game marks now two champions falling off the 100% pick ban list. Darius, unseen in this game, the actual aggressive diving champions of Hecarim and Malphite picked instead of him, and also, as we mentioned, Mordecai's are falling off, compositional counters exist here. Uh, we still, of course, see the gank click on the ban list, the, the Elise picked up and the Lulu picked up early on, but the trend's changing a little bit here. Now, as a quick update for you guys, of course, Champion Select did play out off stream. In real time right now, they're going through the picks and bans one more time, locking in champs. That <laughs> won't be on screen for you, but the game is about to get underway. And we just get to see the fantastic crowd here. Yeah. In Paris, keeping themselves entertained, uh -huh. making it awesome all the way through. We can see them and we feel the energy during the games. When <laughs> yeah. big plays happen, they go crazy. The in-house casters, Chips and Noir, also Sean's and No-No, if you guys remember those guys from the competitive scene, bringing you the, the cast live on the stream here in Paris, France, and it's been wonderful. They are so amazing at keeping this crowd entertained. It's it's absolutely wonderful. These guys are, are some of the, the best commentators I've ever been around. So a little update as well, now with the, with the competitions. Nagni on the Lulu is running teleport in the mid lane, but we have the virus pick for Godfrey, just running Ghost and Flash, so we're gonna have a global advantage and just enjoy this. All right, the last 25 seconds of picks and bands are counting down. We will have those lineups on your screen in just a short while. We will get into one of the biggest matchups of the day. It's actually a great day overall of games, but LGD somehow have started out zero and one. And the Dropping name game of origin. the game for KT is going to be control. If they can control this early stages of the game, then they're going to be sitting very pretty here. Malphite's got a very clear build path. They can rely on the Lulu Kogma. LGD do have some surprise cards they can pull out, though. You know, Elise Thresh pick, never underestimate. No, and like the 2v2 in the top lane, when you have a Hecarim running an offensive summon a spell yep. and Elise, that's a strong 2v2 you can use. All right, well, guys, you at home, please keep involved with the matches. Vote for you think's going to win this one. Use hashtag LGDWin or hashtag KTWin to vote. Let us know how that one's going to go. LGD so far have been the victim of one upset, and based on pick and ban and based on Zyrene's prediction, it might be a second one here. KT Rolster finally the first world championship for the organization. They started out strong with their win over Team Solo Mid. Now looking good heading into their game against LGD, but as number three Korean C could be making a very deep run in this World Championship. So let's take a look here at how LGG can 
play the early game because we talk about how there's a timer on this game. They don't want to go full late game against the Jogamore composition. It's very difficult for Varus and Sivir versus Malfoy and Gragas and Braum when it comes to dealing damage in these fights. But we just quickly highlighted Elise and a Hecarim. That's a strong early 2v2. So LGD, to me, would be happy, honestly, taking a standard lane and try and use TPQ and the early game power he has of this Elise pick. Upset the lanes early, absolutely. Yeah, well, we'll see if that happens. LGD do have more range champion in the bot lane. They could maybe get a bit of harass down onto Pickaboo and Arrow. It's a lane that LGD can push very aggressively in the start and try and deny CS. Also trying to get a lead uh, on the double a, uh, AD comp here with the extra poke is exactly what LGD want to do. They want to try and get that lead for Godby, uh, start rotating around because they have so many skill shots to throw out in the siege. And we can see both teams are still on the bottom side with the dual lane. So LG are looking for those standard lanes. Play around it. Start up by getting Akon going. Use his teleport then to take his advantage and move it to the bottom side of the map. You gotta start getting on outer turf. We're looking like 15 minutes when we had the tier, when we have a brutalizer on the virus, and of course some levels under his belt for his Q, and then the Sivir with a fast pushing. That's where LGD is really gonna kick in and start creating map pressure. Those three out of turrets have to fall in the mid game, otherwise KT can stall it too late. Yeah, basically what LG do, they have Sivir annihilate the creep wave so that it's very clear by the turret for all these skill shots to come through for the Elise and the Thresh to set up poke damage. They're going to match the yep. 2v2 tub after the Soy, what happened on the map, but they're coming in very, very late to very they're late. Not no, not even. Either. They're not going to miss anything, so never mind that one. I even thought KT were doing a camp at level one, but obviously they were straight in lane. So we get the 2v2, LGD were looking for it, they found it. Can now send Akon back down to the bottom lane with his own level two, and of course, someday will do the same after this double camp. BYL takes over the range minion aggro there first, then Imp is able to auto attack there without getting the return damage from the range minions. Nice little uh, 2v2 micromanagement there from the LGD bot lane, and they actually took control of the lane. Now they're shoving with Sivir despite getting their second. Yeah. Even though Sivir doesn't have the greatest matchup here, it changes with your support. Again, it's always two man down in this bottom lane. So having the range support on your side allows you to play really aggressive with pushing in the lane. So you have the safety of a lantern as well from PYL. So good start for LGG and exactly what they want to get this composition going. Well, certainly an interesting start as they've given away the blue buff to Malphite to start out his laning phase. So someday. They're hoping to get him ahead on Acorn here, and that will be a matchup to watch. Yeah, it's that race. Anytime you are facing so much physical damage, you want to rate, you want to bundle as much gold as you can into the Malphite so he can start stacking the armor, uh, and he doesn't get behind. TBQ here, though. We talked Magic about damage it. coming in very early. Wants to get Acorn ahead. He's got Ignite. Knocks somebody into the wall. When is he going to go for the flash? Goes for it there. Last possible second. Gets away, loses health. Really like to play Someday saving his flash, waiting for the minion wave to come, then flashing behind them as well. Yep. TPQ, of course, was delaying his own snare or stun just to see where is he going. Can I try and predict it with my own CC? But we mentioned it. The 2v2 of an Elise and a Hecarim is very, very strong, and that's where he went first. Got good early wards, and meanwhile, topside is covered from PYL and his own ward, and just constant pushing again and again and again, pushing into the tower. Meanwhile, Score's gone back very early. He's got the wards now. He can come down and supplant some extra vision for Someday, while Someday does uh, have the flash disadvantage here. He can get some vision for him. Elise can easily go for lane ganks as well, though, so you still have to be cautious. And this uh, mid lane matchup. With Godvi and of there course Nakne. So it's looking uh, Nakne, normally the guy looking to farm, not the big playmaker in the middle lane. Strong team fighter for KT though. Doing okay for the virus. It's just about getting some levels under your belt. Get the first brutalized to get your tier in and then start sieging with this lineup. Lulu typically can't do a whole lot of when she's standing so far back and you're just shooting her with arrows. Keep my eye on uh, TBQ here. He actually just got the Raptor buff as well. They had a, a ward in the brush when the ward over the wall from score was placed. He can go use his Raptor buff to clear it out, but he's just sneaking in for a lane gank. Score, meanwhile, has his eyes set on mid, trying to target this Varus. Can get a summoner spell at least out of Godby. Oh, yeah, perfect man. positioning. Oh, wait, flash forward. Flash yeah, by Godby, yeah, mistake. flashes the wrong way, it seems, and there's the first blood picked up. Two summoner spells down for Godby, first kill in for Nagne. You cannot afford to make these mistakes when you're running the composition that relies so much on your mid game. 
Plus, that was both bump summoners burn. So not only did he flash into the middle of the lane because of the good positioning from Score getting behind him there, but he blew his ghost and he died in the end anyway. There's still a flash here on Nognet. He can go in, turn you into a cupcake, and Score can repeat. And just a very easy and simple gank for Score here on the Gragas. There was no vision around the mid lane really to spot him. Walks in, even a safe gank had TPQ been nearby, they would still have gotten so much damage on Godwee at first, they would have been okay. And great start for him. He was on really on fire with together with Pickaboo yesterday. Yep. Good stuff, man. Score doing great things for his team. Pickaboo just keeping the lane afloat as much as this push is happening. Very good mechanics by Arrow and Pickaboo, keeping all the CS in that bot lane there. Basically identical. Yeah, luckily for Godby, you know, he's got his tier on Vera, so now he basically sits under his turret and can see us still all the way up to the middle of the lane, firing off arrows. It's such a yeah, funny play item cautiously. for, for Virus, because normally, you know, having tier when you didn't fully stack it, you get that big spike in damage and it's awesome. It never really mattered for him too much because he auto attacks so little when it comes to these fights. Instead for him, it's just about getting the mana regen, getting the armor penetration in has always been key. So him falling behind is a big deal, obviously because he also will stack just the tier itself very slow. He has to upgrade it first so he gets a bit more from the auto attack when it comes to getting mana back. Yeah, plus because his poke comes from the Q, the normal ability, he levels it up much quicker than something like an AP Kogma in the mid lane uh, and can max it out by level 9. Oh, someday finds TBQ, jumps down a few spiderlings, stun comes back, and he's gonna run. Oh, good flash. I like this play though. You know he's going to flash it, but it's an ulti traded for summoner spell. Always worth it here from Sunday. Just forcing that, even at backup coming, so New could go completely aggressive. Yeah. And Sunday's the guy who got ganked. He lost his flash four minutes ago from a gank by TBQ, who has not come back down there. Someday is doing pretty much just fine minion farm wise and Looks like he's no worse for the wear at all. Yeah, plus look at the deep wards that they got during that. Score goes in also. So deep wards here from KT. The early sight stone picked up, whereas Elise TBQ went for the amp tome, trying to uh, get to his jungle item completion first. Yeah. Going for Rune Glaive really wanted to show it's about early mid game for him. He needs the extra damage. Can even go for more magic penetration with his boots if he wants to. We have seen it a few times. Obviously makes you very squishy in these fights, but LGD yeah. knows that if they start getting to these late game fights anyway, TPQ will not be much of a tank. He has to get rolling early game with the team. So far, small CS lead in the bottom lane. Same for top we saw before here. Akon was staying in lane and getting some farm, but Arrow is doing his best to keep up. No, well, Imp had the luxury of free calling when he wanted to, so the BF Sword Saber gonna do fairly well and has some bonus potions as well. We'll see how good the harass ends up being there. Good spell shields. Yeah, and this is the point you really hate as a Severe. Once you start hitting level 6, your ulti is not very useful when it comes to trading back and forth, and instead Arrow can just keep firing these long-range ultis in his face, and Sheen as well makes it very good even against a BF Sword Tiger, and just comes to the quick trade. Yeah, the W active auto attack in itself is a very big uh, win there for Kogma, but PYL so threatening right now, not allowing them to move up, and Imp... <laughs> Uh, retains control of the minion wave. Now the hook on Pickaboo. Problem is, Braum is actually very good in a Sivir. His shield actually stops her W from bouncing, and it kills the back half of the Q. So Pickaboo, even though all these hooks come in from PYL, and he's landed a ton of them, Imp is not a champion that can actually do a lot of damage back to the Braum. He's playing so aggressively, though. Imp continually shoving this wave in, not giving them any time to try and go for trades in the lane. And LGD, they just continue to push up here to retain control. And that's what they can do for now. It's so hard to pull off a gang for TPQ because we have the double side or we have the side stone early from score to get a lot of vision down. So what LGD can do is to say, you know, we're going to wait instead. We don't have to win the game now before 10 minutes. We know we have a big spike in the mid lane with the virus. Severe, once she start really being able to fast push waves with some attacks put under her belt, that's really what they're going to wait for before we see them go super aggressive. For now, just push the lanes, chip down these towers slowly, but surely Whoa. because then you get them a nice engage. Arrows stood still, just tanked a hook, and now Pikachu's gonna come back in, but here's a teleport coming in, a flake as well, Whoa. and there comes Sunday. The two-man knockup, and actually Arrows still all right on this one. Acorn's TP didn't mean much as ulti burned for nothing. Lulu won't gonna try to make it happen. Oh. The knockback, score. <laughs> oh, man. LGD, though. 
Making that aggressive teleport with Acorn is so risky. You're against double TP on the side of KT. Yeah, and I wanted to cut in there too because Score had made his way all the way down the lane. So Arrow was baiting right there by standing still under the turret, and they had the trap set. And that's the thing for LGD. You do not have to pull the trigger pre-10 minutes. Wait for your composition to kick in, then start taking down towers. By slowly chipping down outer turrets, that rotation you can do where you just get two or three of them and suddenly a massive chunk of gold is going to be very simple to pull off once they start landing some poke that really hurts. It's really unfortunate for LGD that that last auto attack did score the killing blow as well. Kogma needs that kill. Now he's going to get off to a good start. They can have an earlier Trinity Force for him and get to grouping. Oh, that's a good ult for Godby. Nogne Force to take some aggro and uh, he's going to be fine. Chuck the 300 health, but not a it's map good though. Danger. It's good from Godby. Again, he slowly gets to hit this mid lane tower. Build it up for this 15 minute, 16 minute mark, and then we start seeing the domino effect where three towers just drop, boom, 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 and suddenly LGG gets the goal lead yep. from it. And that's what they need to then get the map control later on. For now, just continue doing what you're doing on the side of LGG. No yeah. fights though. That big hiccup though down bottom lane. Might be more in the bottom. Like this Whoa, matchup is so bad. Him. No! Goes down. Good stun, good everything. Great pickup by KT Rolster. It's getting worse and worse now. Pays for the constant pushing there. And Pickaboo plus Arrow able to combine and kill him again. Imp right now with flashbacks to season three. Sitting and underperforming with his team, of course. Yeah. Dropped out of group stages. Nobody expected it. The Lantern used pretty early there as well. Not even picked up and they couldn't gain the distance. Yeah, it was dropped for the shield and then, yeah, Imp grabbed it without even getting any distance. It, yeah, just... Unfortunate they are Acorn in a battle with Someday, but Someday's winning this battle pretty hard. Burke Treads versus a Chain Vest, that's not really close. No, well, Acorn is uh, and the built to join his support. team, where Someday can just take these trades so effective with all the armor. Yeah, the slow burn of the Bobby Cinder, not to be underestimated. Very that's true. what Malphite does, he wears you down. And it just seems like it's a metaphor for the rest of the game. LGD as a team are getting worn down. A death to the mid laner, two deaths to their AD carry. Kill spread across to some uh -oh. of the best sources possible. Good, Good lantern. And of course, interesting for Imp, he wants to spell shield these Kog'Maw ultimates to get some free mana, but that leaves windows where Pickaboo knows there's no way to stop Glacial Fissure or even just a simple Winter's Bite Q. Once again, though, LG, they're they're so far up in the lane. They're they're drawing so much jungle attention. Score comes down yet again through the lane. They might make another play here if Pickaboo Imp is able to land. They should know better. LGG has just been too eager, really, to pull the trigger in this one, especially that Akon teleport down to the bottom lane earlier. Like, those are the kind of plays you can't afford to make when you're waiting for specific timings with your champions, because then you simply give KT the opening to start picking up early kills. And it only gets worse when it comes to the scaling we see. God, we can continue to get some good damage on mid tower. That is the key thing. And now we see TPU come in. So again, it was slowly chipped down, and then you can make the play. We're sending two or three guys and take it. And that's what you need to get the goal lead. Nicely done right there. They timed the, the roam actually off of the blue buff being taken by Nogne. But again, because how bad that misstep down bottom was for LGD, even taking down the turret, they don't have the gold lead. Uh, maybe they can claw their way back in. It's certainly going to be a hard one. Those score says, hello, that's going to be my scuttle. Unless Godby can stop that. Nope, not quite. Stun's coming through. Good damage. Score wants it anyway. They knock in TBQ. In comes Braum and out goes LGD. That's going to be the kill. Wild growth is secure at all. Godby's going to run. The knockup's going to hit him, but no one else wanted to chase there. Control for KT rolls. The early game skirmishing here from KT. Just coming out on top over and over again. Plus, the tower gold still standing here. If they can gain this much control just by continually killing LGD, they'll easily be able to take it back. Look at the little trap here being set up from Sunday, waiting for Godry to return to the lane and push it out, realizing though it's going to take a little bit too long and we'll just walk back to the top side where he was looking for the opening and the easy dive on the virus. Plus, KT, every time they get a kill, look, they have multiple members going deep into LGD jungle. They have wards deep on both sides of the jungle. Every move from TVQ will be seen. Never mind, the ward around Raptors just times out, so they <laughs> won't see him yeah. on the bottom side of the map. But because Three they saw- four basic camps still have wards on them. They know, because they just killed him, sent him back to base, and they have wards on the other side. There's yep. one place oh, he could be farming. Place. 
What we're going to see now, though, is that Varus can continue to just instant push the wave. The thing about Lulu, yeah, her wave play is fine, but when she little lands through the wave, she doesn't one-shot it. Nope. So, she needs a bit of extra time to really clear it. Godby has less cooldown for himself, especially once he gets the cooldown reduction boots, and then he can instant push the wave. That applies pressure on the side lanes because he can roam first. And that means they suddenly can keep pushing on the bottom side and slowly again take down this tower they need it and then they have to rotate to the top side and get the last out of turret. Yeah, LGG gonna prep a play down on the bottom side. There are plenty of wards for Acorn, Acorn to teleport in. He would really like to get that level 11 first. And that is a good point. Because Acorn, uh, sorry, because Nagne is sitting with teleport, even if Varus can roam first, Nagne can always join in. So. We almost have a situation where LGG needs to find a way to blow one of these teleports before they want to go for any of the aggressive plays. You can see Godfrey is constantly moving away from his lane. He pushes out and then he leaves because he knows Nagne and Someday can be in the bottom side in no time. And he has to be close by for five versus five. This is what it looks like when a Malphite wins lane, by the way. Yeah. He just six, slowly 16 wears minutes. you down. He takes the turret first to level 11. Uh oh, it might get more dangerous. It loses a lot of health here. Be careful. Stun's gonna land onto a minion. TVQ, can I hit the right target? PYL gonna be the first casualty. And a beautiful explosive cast means Elise will be next on the table. And that's only one of the teleports. They can get a turret after this. They can even get Dragon after that. Wow. KT Arrows taking control. LGG is falling apart completely. Too many mistakes in the early game. Too many poorly picked fights. Easy gank in the middle and Godry coming in. This is gonna be a high armor mouth. He just now lost the passive shield. Three turret shots in. Not even difficult. A teleport for Acorn. Useless but why? teleport. Even gonna ha cost him his Not life. Useful for KT. They get a Zolti. Now he's gonna fight Arrow. It's gonna be close. Arrow goes down. And finally, LGD get a kill. But another teleport's gonna or another turret is gonna go down after that. KT, as we said, they're easily gonna be able to take down these outer turrets. Up. Oh. Too little life. KT Rolster is manhandling right. this game. Now maybe not that easy. Three and a half thousand gold lead, eight kills to one. It's worth pointing out the farm is still staying equal to maybe even a slight LGD advantage. Like all of the gold lead is just these kills. And LGD still trying to push in for this dragon as well. And it did, yeah, okay. Again, knowing you have double teleport, KT can go for these plays. Yeah, I mean, Imp just gets destroyed in the trade down bottom, so even if ev every member is accounted for, KT would still come out on top, so... Big move from, from them down bottom, as you know, but... It's not even just the gold. Again, as we went over in Champ Select, KT looking really, really good just from the beginning stages. And now they're gonna make another play on Imp. There's no turret oh. this time. Well, Some backup though. Yeah. TBQ is on the bottom side as well. He got his Elise first pick. That was the entire bait for, from KT saying, we know you want that for your jungler. Ends up giving that Juggamore composition, which would do well against the Mordecai thing. So just overall, yeah. a super smart pick and ban phase. TBQ has so far collectively 0-9-1 and one in the World Championship so far. Wondered what it would be like for him, and so far it's been really pretty miserable for the man. Honestly, I thought people were being a little too harsh on him yeah. at first, but goodbye. Yeah. Suddenly, everyone's in the so. mid lane. Even some days roaming around. Top lane is alone right now. It's going to be pushed in by Acorns, Hecarim, but KT are just taking everything down now. All three outer turrets are gone. Now Imp gets found as well. Can't dodge much of this one. Does do a nice flash over the wall. That's about as long as he could have gotten it. And right now, we're 19 minutes in. Someday has 256 armor yeah. against a physical mid laner. Physical, of course, AD carry. I say, of course, that Mordecai <laughs> could have been the AP1, but. And also a physical top laner. This guy is unkillable. Yeah. It, even, like, the only magic damage they have is TBQ, and Someday will crush him like the spider that he is. <laughs> And just pull the legs off one at a time. TBQ did at least go Rune Glaive, so... You know, he's got some extra ability power. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to yeah, find the... Yeah, one shot that mouth hearts. I mean, glaring... Yeah, definitely the glaring weakness for uh, LGD here is TBQ. Whether it's 
from the in-game play or trying to compensate for him in Champions. Sure, lines. that's a big deal here. Maybe they're feeling forced to it first pick that and not go for the Lulu if they wanted it. But we saw Lulu from them yesterday not doing a whole lot either for LGD as a team. So, like, this game, I agree, TPQ is a weakness. But to me, I've, I'm looking at the entire team here. Yeah. Because the bottom lane fight and so on was not really anything TPQ could change. Like, yeah. that was the team taking a bait, basically, TPing in super aggressive, and then realizing, oh, we can double teleport and just get him punished for it. Give up more early kills. Yeah, um, very true. We just have to look at the entire lineup. And yeah. so far, they're not showing up. Now, LGD right now are the biggest disappointment of the tournament. They have the inverse steak. Yeah. LGD is vegetarian. Team all herbivores and not all as well here for this team. Well, um, KT, they've got a very clear path here to close this out. Watch as their ward line continues to encroach on LGD territory here. They're working it in. LGD are doing their best to try and defend it, but it's just so dis difficult. Yeah. Someday, oh. he just won't stop. No. Continuing to wear yeah. him, wear Acorn down. There's not much Acorn can do except focus on the minion wave. All three lanes just getting pushed in, and yep. it's just a matter of time before KT puts the focus on Baron. Exactly. Plays a few pink wards around and says to LGD, either you come face shake us in, into a fight you're never going to win, or you just let us take the Baron and then pushing 1-3-1 one, one becomes so much more effective. Ooh! A couple of flashes traded, but otherwise all is well. It's just the normal KT style. This looks somewhat similar to how they won up against TSM uh, just a few days ago. It's it's methodical and smart, and one at a time they knock down objectives. And when KT wins games, there are not many kills. And you can see here, 0.5 kills per minute underneath that, actually. Definitely low. We really want to see with LGG the team communication is like because there's so many small moves in the early game between all the teams and every single early game we've seen there small miscommunication can can make or break almost your entire early game if if a member is positioned wrong if he teleported in on the wrong time or maybe the team were calling for Akon to not join in and he did anyway we don't know what's going on with the team we know of course there has been some problems in the past because they have Koreans they have Chinese players yeah and. It's something we see more and more from these Chinese teams now, that they have these mixed rosters. It looks like there are some miscommunication happening in the early game. Yeah. Oh, KT Rolster. I gotta mention, par for the course. They're, uh, throughout the season, in wins, KT Rolster, there's 0.59 kills per minute. We're even below that here. And KT playing such a controlled style. Of all the teams we could measure, they were the bloody least bloody of the teams here at Worlds. I mean... But this is KT, this is what they do. Yeah. They take control of the map. Someday is, like, there's no way you're taking this guy down. Nope. He's got nothing to worry about. There's there's not a Last Whisper in sight. Well, there is one in sight. I see one right now. godby has got one. But oh, that's not gonna be the long range knock up. Yeah. Godby, implodes. Godby will have his last whisper, but again, he's never going to sit an auto matter. attack the Malphite. He can maybe land a Q or two, and that's about it. Someday, just as an update, is currently sitting on 338 armor now. And uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to stop here. Well, what about a Thorn Mail? Why not? Uh, yeah, you know what? That sounds fun. Got a Cloth Emma right now. Even go hardcore for like Dead Bands, play it afterwards. Just keep adding yeah. pieces to the puzzle. Funnily enough, I, I always debate the last item. Uh oh, here we go. God, he knocked against the cliff. He's got nowhere to go. Good damage on Anagne. I mean, they can get some hits across, but the problem is they die too fast because of the Malphite dives. 5-0-1, Anagne, actually a big kill leader here. And that's, you know, look at how deep this vision is for KT. You step out of line, even your, even this LG side of the jungle is not their own. Here comes the tans uh, answer of a defensive teleport. Yeah, TBQ lands a flash stun and says, you know, let's go for this one. In comes Acorn, and they're like, wait, why do we even do this? Pass to ulti away. Someday still chill to the front lines. And wow, everyone's airborne like they love vitamin C. And down goes the turret, down goes the champions.
KT going for the win on this one. And someday you can tell, no fear in his heart. As soon as he gets in there, immediately stop the Hecarim and then move forward. They're not afraid at all, even before he tries to use a Hecarim ult to escape. Someday's already attacking the back line. This is going to be an inhibitor turret. They're inside the base. Pickaboo's really low. Godview's trying to look. Oh, no! Oh, I shut the wrong way! He tried to run <laughs> and let go of Q too late. Not like it matters for too much here. Inhibitor's going to be taken out easily. Oh my gosh, has to flash away, oh, still goes down. Goes down. This is catastrophic now for LGD. What a route here from KT. And we keep seeing these compositions with double teleport. Once they get that lead, the map control is just insane. Whenever LGD is trying to make a flashy play just to come back, double TP happens. Yep. Everyone is there suddenly for KT, and it's just so easy for them to turn around. It's Double frozen so hard. No volley. You have everything you need on the side of KT. Zero, and only 25 five, in. zero. Got yeah. me in the mid lane on that last pick, Varus. We see it here. Double TP. I mean, so, like, TPQ has to go for something. They need to try and catch out a target if they want to get back in the game. And look at someday. Okay, I stopped you. My right. eyes are for the prize. Yeah. Looking for kills now. I got 350 armor right now. Imp is basically healing me every time he hits me. And oh. massive knockup. The rest of the team can just follow up, clean up. It's also fantastic being an AD carry. And this team is looking at your front line, doing all the work. You just have to be like last hitting a little bit, right click, yep. and get a few more kills. And this, by the way, we looked at LGD's Kog'Maw uh, game from earlier. It's OK to play a bunch of offensive champions with a Kog'Maw because you create so much havoc, you get the freedom to hit whatever you want. You don't have to worry about being peeled for. This is this is like what LGD wanted in their game yesterday. Yeah, big difference was that what Origin did against LGD was they stacked a lot of late game damage and mixed damage as well. We had a Kalista and then we had, of course, a lot of magic damage from both Vladimir and Orianna. So there were so many threats to kill this single target main damage dealer. In this case, it's Arrow on the side of KT. LGD did almost the opposite. They're like, okay, so we know you have now a Juggernaut composition. We're going to try and run some poke and see if we can maybe get some towers early game and get the game rolling. But also the Hecarim pick coming in just meant that it was so easy for KT to stack a bunch of armor against it and say there's no threat now against our front line or our back line. You can see the value of counter picking at the very end here for Sunday. The Malphite, no threat of a Vladimir coming through after Look at that pick of the game. Get yeah. the passive down, that's it. Even with the static ship hitting, he, yeah, did 10% max health. PYL now down to 800. More attacks in, forced to flash away, but Nagne's gonna whimsy and say, no, I really want this one. Poked around, though. Here comes the team. Someday to the front line is already... There's the ulti in, locks up two. And here comes the push, the knockup again on a god V. So much is happening. The health bar is getting so low. The shotgun actually happens. Whoa, an overcommit from KT, and it does mean the two kills come back through. That is something, but it's just a drop in the bucket here for LGD. Yeah. A little bit of quick cash. And it, even so, it's just a trade even two for two. They still have no control over the map, and it's going to be hard for them to get it back. Yeah. We knew Malphite was going to die someday, but looks like it happened right now. <laughs> Thought you were against name puns there. Yeah, but... I, I recanted <laughs> once I realized that there's way too many of them available. <laughs> Either way, though, I mean, this is this is rough. 17 to 3 in kills. KT Rolster have knocked the inhibitor down, but this inhibitor's going to respawn soon-ish, and Imp's getting a ton of farm back. But 11,000 gold lead is still what has to be made up for. And now we talked about the pick and ban phase just before here. I think today we have seen how teams, by not just banning the three top-tier picks in Mordecai's of Lulu and uh, Gangplank, are starting to really make red side look a lot stronger because yes. on, on day one blue side was 6-0 the like, manipulation oh. from red side exactly is... there's so many small mind games you make me like oh so here's this elise pick you really want but there's also these two top tier picks but if you pick one of them we're gonna have something ready for it so we, we're starting to see teams now not be afraid of leaving the top tier picks open like on day one where it was always like elise first pick and then you had a disadvantage from there that's fair enough it does not account for the later stages of the of the draft base from that LG, is very though. true definitely so, been some mistakes as well so yeah we don't don't attribute it this whole setup to uh side selection no but baron gonna go down pretty easily though lgd have had two very bad champion selects in a row now so that is something that definitely needs to be shored up acorn i know is one of the voices in that one in fact for a time he was the actual coach of the team <laughs> and and literally just like led all those phases, but right now he is not having right. a positive impact with this. Obviously lost that coach, but he was only the coach for like two weeks. 
yeah. uh, for LGG like in playoffs and he well even went out and said it was the analyst who was doing most of their work anyhow so they didn't really care about losing the coach too much yeah. coming into the world championship he's obviously now the analyst or former analyst is now the head coach of the team seen some problems though for them when it comes to draft and composition yeah they got with all the changes i mean the thing is they actually played games no they didn't play in 516 because they didn't play in the regional and here we go into the base one or the second inhibitor the top inhibitor being laid bare kt slowly gonna work this one down tbq can only throw a cocoon there's the flash engage they caught him he's gonna flash out himself but someday is gonna return on this one the chain of corruption comes across, but already two kills, now three kills picked up. Acorn jumps in, tries to pick up a little bit of something. Score will go down, but only the one kill. There's the A's. KT Rolster should be closing it out now. It only took him 31 minutes. KT 2-0 to start out their world championship. Dominating victory as well for them. Champ selects. We had a lot of questions. Yeah. With uh, what LGG were drafting, how little time they really had to win this game, and how specifically they had to play it, and just too many mistakes from the start allowed yeah. LGG to. I mean, plus the in-game play there, we had the Varus die pop both of the summoners very early, Flashed really far way. up, really far up in the lane against a Gragas. Um, meanwhile. The bottom play, you know, goes without mentioning you know, how badly that turned around for them. Oh. Unfortunate things here for LGD. But KT Rolster, of course, they have a very well-deserved bow here. It opens up this group that people were referring to as the group of death so wide because even when everyone was mentioning group of death, the most probable to be on the top for everyone was still LGD. Yeah. And they yeah. started out 0-2. Yeah, I mean, LGD was the obvious number one. You can see Imp not happy with how the game exactly went. But LGD was the obvious number one, and it was